Today I'm talking uh, with Hisashi, a good player and composer, yes. and about uh, traditional Japanese yeah. music, yeah. and music and technology, mm -hmm. and the future of traditional Japanese music. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, let me introduce uh, her briefly. Uh, her name is Katrina from Finland, and she is our writer. And she is now here in Japan to talk with me. So uh, I'm really excited to meet you. Thank you very much. And yeah, can you, can you tell me a little bit about our relationship? So, I mean, how did you find me? Or, yeah. Yeah, it was a poor accident uh, uh, two years ago. Uh, in fact, I was browsing on YouTube and Which? I found uh, Hisashi playing a koto cover of Hide's song, yeah. Hurry Go Round, mm -hmm. and it was the 2nd of May, Hide's death anniversary. Oh. So I remember that very well, and uh, I like Hisashi's uh, version of oh, that you. song, and uh, I wanted to know more about him. Thank you. So, you are known as a good artist mm -hmm. and composer, uh, but that's not all what yeah. you have done during your musical yeah. career. Please tell me briefly about your background as a musician. Yes, so uh, I went through three different genres in my music career. Um, one is, yeah, traditional Japanese. So I'm my mom is a koto player, a koto player and koto teacher. So I was surrounded by the kind of traditional Japanese music when I was, yeah, since I was born. And uh, when I was five or six, I started to play the piano. So throughout the piano, I learned Western classical music like Beethoven and Mozart. And the last one is rock music. When I was in junior high, I started to play the drums and started to rock, started, started rock band with my friends. So yeah, unfortunately I quit playing the drums around two years ago because of backache. But yeah, uh, the experience as a drummer has have a profound influence on me, yeah. So, from uh, whom you have gained influences and from whom you have learned something, musicians, composers, like mm. that, that, whose footsteps you have followed, if I can say. Yes, so. So, there are so many musicians and composers that that have influenced me. But today I would pick some artists who are eligible for today's topic. One artist that I respect is Hide. Yeah, you, you, you know about him very well. Uh, Hide is a legendary uh, rock guitarist in Japan. So uh, from him, I learned the importance of kind of forward thinking. Now, for example, uh, he's really famous for, you know, seeing the importance of the internet when that was around uh, 90s. So it was amazing. For example, he made his own website when the internet was not, in, not popular at all. And he tried uh, a lot of things using the internet yeah, already. So, yeah, I think why he was so visionary artist, I think the reason is uh, he had a childlike curiosity about everything, even, even something very new. So I learned from him the importance of the attitude toward things. When he came across something very new, 
he was not afraid it. Instead, he was so curious about it, and he tried to do something with it. The attitude really influenced me. And also, I, you know, for the same reason, I really respect David Boy. Yeah, he's one of the you know, forward-thinking artists. And he also saw the, the potential of the internet already in the 90s. And his way of thinking is really deep, profound. So, uh, yeah, this is a really good example. In the interview by BBC in 1999, David Toy was talking about the, you know, uh, impact of the internet. In, in that video, the interviewer pointed out that some people, some people uh, criticizes the internet because the importance of value of the internet was so exaggerated. But to this, you know, comment, David Foy said, uh, no, it's more profound and it's kind of alien life form. Yeah, I was really impressed by his way of thinking. Their music style is completely different from mine, but I learned a lot of things from these great artists. You mentioned here Hide and yeah. David Bowie, yeah. uh, who, are the, who made very different kind of music than you are doing. Yeah. So can you say uh, how you could utilize their mm. work in your own work? Okay, in terms of music, uh, electronic music is, you know, from, from their style, I think. So both two artists used a lot of electronic sound in, into his, or yeah, the, into their works. So recently I released three songs where I, I put a lot of electronic music style, electronic things, and I combine, I, I try to combine electronic and traditional Japanese. I guess that the, we are now coming to the main theme of this interview. Uh, I have followed uh, your recent write-ups and your post on, posts on oh. social media, and they are full of terms like NFT, metaverse, something that I'm not uh, known <laughs> about at all. Okay. And, and uh, those are terms that are not linked with traditional music. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And uh, last year you launched uh, the NFT project for yeah. traditional Japanese musical instruments and music. Yeah. That is called Crypto Bagaki. Yeah. Did I pronounce it correct? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Uh, how did you uh, become interested in combining traditional Japanese uh -huh. music? and the latest technology in the first place? Yeah, uh, it was around 2021 when I got interested in that kind of stuff. So at that time, I was a little bit struggling with the current platforms like YouTube and Instagram and Twitter. So what I want to say is uh, on those kind of platform, the important thing is followers or views, it's a game for getting as much attention as possible. And I don't think it's a bad thing, but for, for me personally, I was not good at that because my profession, my, my music career is not about pop music. So when I heard about the newest technology like NFT and the metaverse and DAO, something like that, I was really excited. Oh, this new technology could change the roots of the industry. Yes, yeah, certainly the current internet platform like YouTube provided us 
a lot of opportunities to promote ourselves. It's really good. And also, we, yeah, thanks to those platforms, we can easily communicate with my fans, which is also really great. So I think the current technology is about making the internet wider and more interactive. On the other hand, the newest technology is about, it's more about, you know, putting some meaning or creating meaning. But when I understood that, I was really excited, like, oh, uh, in the next age, we do not only have to get attention, we can get more options on the internet, options to do on the internet. In the past, in the past, or even now, the, you know, option is really small, just to put something catchy that a lot of people won't want to watch and get attention, get popularity. But in the future, in the near future, we will have more options to do. Can you give some concrete examples uh, to people like me and okay. other people out there who might not be so familiar with these things? That, uh, how, how, how it works? Okay, so it's going to be so long. But firstly, I want to say uh, I, I'm not 100% sure about how exactly we can use it for our music or for, for our industry. But I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure that the impact of the technologies is really huge and the potential is amazing. Now we are living in the age of social media and a variety of social medias were born in the last decade, like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And the, I think the most important characteristic of that kind of social media is that interactive communication between people became much easier and useful. So thanks to the technology, the internet is not just about getting information like seeing website, that's all. In the past, the internet was like that, but, in, but now the internet is for you know, communicating with each other. It's really interactive. So what comes next? I think the internet will be richer and much meaningful and even much emotional in the next 20 or 30 years. Let me explain the image. I'm, I'm sorry for, it's really conceptual, so it's really hard to explain, but I, yeah, I will give some example after, after this. So let me explain the image in my head. My, in my image, the current internet is, you know, extremely extensive, field, extensive space, which is two-dimensional. Like we have x-axis here, we have y-axis here, but it's still two-dimensional. This is the current internet. And the next internet, it's going to be three-dimensional. So in the next decade, I think we will have new axis, z-axis here. And NFT is going to be a very important part of this Z-axis. And some criticism about NFT is it's just a money game for earning money. And yeah, to this comment, I, I would say no, it's about emotion. So it, yeah, I know it's really conceptual, so it's really hard to understand. So I will explain it, taking some concrete example. So before explaining, to put it simply, what is NFT? NFT is data with certification that proves 
that this is the original. This is different from other copies. So thanks to this technology, we can tell the difference between the original data and copies. So the NFT, it's unreplaceable. So thanks to this innovation, we can own the data just like things in real world, for example, car, for example, books. And some people say, okay, I got it. So we can own something in also in the digital world. So what? But I think the ownership and irrepressibility is really important idea uh, for people, for people to feel strong emotion to substances. For example, let's say you own a car and you drive it every single day and you've been using it for over like 10 or 20 years and then you would probably be fond of the car. You feel attached to that car. You feel some strong emotion to that car. Yes, you, now your car is really special, unreplaceable. And for some reasons, if you have no choice but to sell that car, you probably feel sad, sense of loss. So what I want to say is uh, owner, the ownership is a bond between a person to substance. And about irrepressibility, irrepressibility is only created by the time you spend with the substance, which is about meaning. So, for example, oh, let me, inter- let me uh, explain by my case. Last November, there was a big event, big NFT event in Kyoto. In the event, I gave a trial lesson for Koto, trial free lesson for Koto for the participants. And yeah, in that lesson, participants learned how to, how to play the Koto, how to read the score, and eventually uh, they played a simple piece of Koto music. And what I did in the event was to record the sound of each participant. And then uh, I made NFT from that data. And yeah, finally I sent them to each participant. So in this case, the NFT is related to the very personal memory of Kyoto where they played the Koto. So every time you see the NFT, you can remember all the things that happened in that day with the actual sound they made. And another story about this event, some of the participants were children. So I sent the NFT to the parents in this case. And this is really heartwarming story. For example, 10 years later, the parent say to the, says to the, you know, daughter or son, hey, this is the NFT of uh, your sound, your sound that you made with Makoto or something. Yeah, and yeah, it's really, you know, helpful for family to communicate with each other. It's really heartwarming, isn't it? Uh- So you seem to be very worried about the current situation, about uh, traditional Japanese music. Yes. And you, as a Koto musician, definitely definitely want to do something Mm, about about this. Uh, what What kinds of advantages the latest technology uh, could bring for spreading, uh, mm-hmm. spreading information about traditional Japanese musical instruments mm-hmm. and music. Uh, is, is this modern technology, uh, is it the only way to reach the modern audience? And, yeah. and to save the ancient uh, 
tradition. Tradition, yeah. Yes, the situation is not very good. For example, the sales of koto or shamisen has been declining by more than 80% since the 70s. And the problem is the decline of the sales of the instrument means our industry is in danger. So, for example, in uh, traditional Japanese music, Japanese music concerts, many of the people in the audience is always uh, people who are involved in our industry. For example, uh, amateur instrument player or even professional instrument player or, you know, teachers or, you know, instrument shop, something like that. I suppose over 90% of the supporters of our industry is, yeah, people who are dedicated to the traditional Japanese industry in some ways. And in other major genres like rock music, uh, fans from the outside of the industry support the ec economy. I mean, for example, rock fan, a rock fan doesn't necessarily play the guitar. So the most important thing is to make our community wide and open. We should invite more people outside of the industry. So community, the key is community because movement always comes from community. So I think it's not enough to reach, just to reach modern people because now there is no community that, you know, people outside can feel free to join. The traditional Japanese music community is really exclusive, really closed. So. The community, yeah, community is important. And the newest technology is really suitable for creating community, I think. The technologies are really fantastic at strengthening the bond between people because it's really about emotion. As I said, for example, I yeah, gave you an example of you know, fam and family who share the memory of NFT. So. Okay, I don't think the technology is the only way to solve the problem, but I'm quite sure uh, technology is the most effective way to solve the problem. So, yeah. what are your thoughts about the future of traditional Japanese music? Yes, okay, so despite the older problem, that we have, I think there is some hope. So for example, have you ever heard of a band called Wagaki Band? Yes, I have. Oh, really? Yes. The band Wagaki Band is a great example because, you know, Wagaki Band was get successful using the internet. The uh, music video went viral and uh, the video got, yeah, I think 100 million view or something. I think it's really important to create something new that fascinates people living now, just like Wagaki Band did, because uh, the culture is dead when it's forgotten by people, I think. And some traditional people say, like, Oh, it's not tradition. I, I hate it. Something like that. But in my opinion, the idea of creating something new and the idea of protecting tradition should not be in conflict with each other. On the contrary, these two ideas can even help each other because uh, if some people get interested in some works, which is created, which, which were created uh, based on tradition, inspired by tradition, not all of them, but some of them uh, are likely to want to know the roots of the roots of the work. So I mean, new content can be a gateway 
to the tradition. So let's take an example of Wagaki Bento. The really good thing about them is many of their fans are not involved in, you know, Wagaki, I mean, traditional Japanese industry. And moreover, some of the fans start to play the traditional instrument inspired by Wagaki Band, which is really amazing. And this is a great example of the fact that new content can be a gateway to the tradition. And also I want to say to the you know, traditional people who says it's not traditional, I hate it. I want to say to the people that those people are you know, worried about you know, if the tradition is dead because of something new. But I want to say our tradition is not so weak. Our tradition is not so easily destroyed just because there are the options. You certainly have a mission here. Yeah. Uh, so what are your goals and mm. how will you continue from now on? Okay, so my ultimate goal is to revive traditional Japanese music as an art or an entertainment that fascinates and excites people living in now. And I will try a lot of things to find some potential ways to make it happen. Honestly, I don't have specific answer. So I think I need to test a lot of things. For example, what kind of people would uh, like would like Japanese traditional Japanese music, and what kind of people would not? Or, uh, for example, what the best way to make it look more attractive, or something? I mean, what kind of design is suitable for? Uh, traditional Japanese music or, or, or something like that. I think this is a little bit beyond the scope of musicians, uh, typical musicians' work. But I'm personally really interested in you know, and excited about this. As a musician, I would like to put more effort on composing songs. Uh, we need to uh, think about a lot of things these days. For example, composing AI, yeah, is yeah already starting amazing songs in a few seconds. Now we are living in an age of significant change. Uh, I mean, for yeah, mainly about technological change like AIs, and many creators are worried about if AI replace my jobs or something like that. Many people are worried about that. But personally, I'm really excited about it. Yes, we can think about a lot of things. How to use AI to my, you know, you know, song or something. It's really exciting. So I'm not worried about that. Or rather, I'm excited about the future coming. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. I was really excited and yeah, I'm very glad to yeah be interviewed by you. Thank you very much.